So guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up the Bitax Supra. So as you can see here, we've just got a fully built model. We got the fan there on the front. We had the LCD screen there and then the power socket, if I can get it to focus right there. So we're going to be showing you how to actually set it up and get it mining to a pool. So you can see the back there with all the components. Normally, it will come with some sort of stand depending on where you're buying it from. This could be from Decentral Tech, link in the description if you want to go get yourselves one of them. But normally, they, whichever one you're purchasing it from, will give you a 3D printed stand or something like this where you can put it in. And it's got a hole on the side here for where you plug in your power. So one thing I do want to note is that I don't believe that they sell it with this power supply because this is a UK plug but if you are in America you will have American plugs and if you're in Europe they do ship out with European plugs. So what we have here is just AC to DC so you got to make sure if you're buying it in the UK you've got to have an input of 100 to 240 and then an output of 5 volts. So this can pull up to 20 watts and I believe the Bitax hovers around 13 to maybe 16 depending on the overclocks on the bitax but we'll get into that kind of in the end of the video for overclocking on these so the main thing you want to do when you're setting this up is that it's going to kind of create its own wi-fi network and you're going to have to log into that either on your phone or on a computer so you're going to have to actually click into it and i'll show a picture right now of what it actually looks like on an iphone so you can kind of see the bitax there once you click into it, it's going to open up this Axe OS screen. What you do from here is you actually input your Wi-Fi name and then your Wi-Fi password. So if I just show you this now, we can see here, this is our Wi-Fi name and this is our Wi-Fi password here. So what we've actually done is it will default to nothing basically. And you've got to input your Wi-Fi name right here and then your wi-fi password right here that will be all done either on your phone or on your computer and once that is done it will actually connect it over to your computer network so there will be some pictures that i'm flashing up on the screen right now that will kind of you know pertain to what you should do this can't really be shown i don't think because i've already actually done it for this one but if i get another one then i'll show you through the whole thing and then you obviously want to update your firmware. So all you have to do is browse on here. So you just click there, it will download something and you click browse and basically put the file onto it. But I'll show you how to do that in the other part of this video. So all you have to do is actually plug it in, turn it on and connect it. And obviously if you follow the steps, they're really easy to, and normally a lot of these come with guides, but we're gonna plug it into there and we're gonna start it up and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So as we can see here, it powers on right there. So once it's plugged in and plugged into a socket, it should power on and it should actually just go to zero. So normally it won't start mining until you've got it connected up to a pool. So as we can see there, we're just at around 36 degrees. So this is our IP that we're connected to. This will be shown on the computer as well. So we'll show you how to do that as well. And then below is the version. If you look there, that's your giga hash and then your shares. You can zoom this in a little bit and then your time. And yeah, that's about it. So giga hash, shares, fans, temperature, power, and then watts and millivolts. I think that is, oh, sorry, millivolts and milliamps. So then it will actually show up on here and we'll just skip over to the computer screen so you guys can actually see how to connect it to a pool. And I'll run you through the overclocking that we have here. So we'll see you on the actual computer screen. So once you have all of this set up, as I said right here, we have our Wi-Fi name. So this is what's going to be on your router and then the Wi-Fi password. Obviously, I'm not really breaching too much, I don't think, by showing you this because it's just a Wi-Fi name and the password is obviously the main thing. So this is where you actually configure your miner in terms of the pool. So right now we're actually mining to unminable. And this is the stratum, the user obviously, and then the stratum password. Down here, we have our frequency, which is basically our overclocking, and then our core voltage, which is also overclocking. So before we do anything, I just wanna make sure that we're on our latest release. So what you would do here, as it says there, ESP 
dash miner dot bin. And once you click here, it's actually going to download. You can decide to keep it. And then all you have to do is click browse by here and find the file where it's downloaded. Double click it and it should update the latest firmware. The same goes for the website update for Axe OS. So it's running off of this OS and this is basically where you can change things. So normally it will come preset with a port, which will be either, you know, decentral text port or whichever place you bought it from, it will be their port. But if you want to choose a pool, I recommend going for a public pool because these are like a solo mining Bitcoin pool. As you can see here, a lot of BitAxe is on that pool right now. So it's around 1,400. And then there's a bunch of other ones as well, like Nerd Axes, Q Axes, Bitaxe Hex, Piax, and a bunch of other miners on there, all looking for solo blocks. You can see that the hash rate has actually jumped quite a lot overall on average across the pool. So I believe that this was to do with the Nerd Axe actually improving in hash rate. But if you do want to choose any other pool, you can obviously choose them from mining pool stats, and you can find basically any of them on here. Just remember that the payout is going to be very, very high for minimum payouts. You're not probably going to get payout on the bit axe or any of the models realistically unless you hit a block, which is pretty unrealistic. But you can still do things like on unminable, which will show in a different video. So what you would do to actually connect to this pool is you take this part of the stratum and port. So this is going to be our stratum. We copy that and we paste it into here. So our stratum URL, as it says there, don't use stratum plus TCP and then colon dash dash or the port number. So we only want the stratum URL and then we actually take this port number here. So this is the stratum and then this is the port. So we've taken that number and we're gonna paste it into here. And then obviously, as you can see here, we have a Casper address, but this is only for unminable. So what we would do is we take this out and you want to input your Bitcoin address. So once you've copied your Bitcoin address, you can paste it in here. And as it says on public pool, you have to add a worker name as well. So we go back and we might just do bit ax here, just to show that it's the bit ax. And then the password is just going to be X, as it says right here. So once that's done, you actually want to save it. This is not going to reset the bit ax. You have to click save and then you have to restart the device by here. That's actually going to restart your device. If you click onto the dashboard, you can see we're on zero hash rate, but it is going to load up pretty soon. So our efficiency, our shares are here and our best difficulty there. So to monitor basically all of the stuff that you're going to need, you can see down here you have power, input voltage, ASIC voltage requested, ASIC temperatures, the fans, the frequency and the voltage measured. So you can see the hash rate coming up here. We haven't actually submitted any shares to the pool, so we won't actually be able to search for our address yet. However, when we do submit a share to the pool, our address can be seen on the public pool. We'll be able to search for it in public pool. So as you can see there, we have one share. So if you just go to settings and we bring this address back up, we can copy this and we can paste it into the login here. So it just goes onto my workers. It shows your best difficulty, your network hash rate, block height, and network difficulty. So you can actually see your workers right here as well. Bitax, one session, hash rate, best seasonal difficulty, uptime, and last seen. Obviously it will show it in here. So this is kind of like the same screen as AxOS, as you can see on the dashboard here nearly the same screen just displaying some of the same type of measurements but this is obviously on the pool right now so i have had problems with the bit axe turning off so it will obviously show in the logs here there are a bunch of people on twitter or on youtube that can help you out or even on reddit i believe that will help you out if you have any errors in here you just copy and paste it and i'm sure somebody will help you out so normally mine kept dipping in and out as in it would start restarting maybe every 15 minutes and then come back on within the minute. Uh, that was very annoying and I still haven't found a workaround for it quite yet, but I believe that it's to the pool and my actual connection to the Wi-Fi. However, once it's all set up, you can obviously go to overclocking on the Bitax. So it doesn't actually let you do your own overclocks in terms of, you know, you can't go 
in between these numbers. So you can only have it at like 490, 500, 525, and so on and so forth. Same with the core voltage. Obviously, if you up these, you're gonna be using more power. So I believe that this is actually the most efficient in terms of the hash rate per watt. So you wouldn't really wanna go above this unless you've got better electricity rates or maybe you've got better cooling on the bit axe. The standard cooling is okay, but I know that there are some modifications that you can make to that to make it cooler. And then you can actually up the frequency or the core voltage. So there are little ways you can play around with the overclocking there. I believe that some people have also put them in immersion tanks and therefore, you know, you don't actually have the need for the fan. So you can get the overclocks higher without drawing as much power to the actual board. But mostly it's a pretty easy plug and play Bitcoin miner. It's obviously kind of like playing the lottery. You'd spend $100 on this miner and hopefully it hits a block. We're obviously going to be using it for different things on the channel. And it's more of a content thing for us and not really trying to hit a Bitcoin block. But obviously, if there's any updates that we can do, you know, get more hash rate and stuff like that, I'll let you guys know. I believe that the board on this, or at least the chip, is from an S21. So it gets nearly the same efficiency as an S21. It dips in and out. Obviously, that's just to do with, you know, the programming. But I believe if you can get it steady enough at around 700 giga hash, something like that, the efficiency is the best at that with around 24 watts per terahash. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you want to know any more things about the Bitax, please leave comments below. I'll also try answer any questions if you guys are struggling. Hit me up on Twitter or even on YouTube comments and I'll try help you out with setting it up. It is a very easy setup and hopefully you guys can get one yourself. As I said, link in the description to buy one of these from Decentral Tech. And if you want to know where you can get them from, you can just go over to the bitax.org website and you can look down here for Bitax Legit. Once you click here, it'll show you all the legit sellers of Bitax and where you can buy them from. So the regions that you can buy them from. I'll leave links to everything that I've used in this video in the description below. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.